Every time I look at this dress, I remember having breakfast on it from years ago. My family used to eat off of it. We ate off of this thing. Now it's a dress that I'm wearing. I'm making a dress out of tablecloth, but this isn't a regular kind of tablecloth. It's been lived through. It's led a long life full of kitchen and food related accidents and in turn has earned itself quite the personality. It's an old, scruffed up, bitter looking tablecloth and I'm turning it into a dress for better or worse. I feel like a walking piece of kitchen history. I'm gonna start off by cutting out the bodices. It has stains that no matter how many times you wash them, no matter how many different concoctions you use, they just don't come out. <laughs> They're just gonna get sewn right down that line. So when it comes to dealing with all of the holes in the tablecloth, which, by the way, I don't know how they got there. All I know is that this is very old. Probably when it was being used as tablecloth, it was getting ripped up by accident, you know, out of use. Maybe a rodent got to it in the garage. Let's hope not. I'll cut out these fruits, sew them like patches onto the holes. That's what I've got so far. The front bodice is really big. It's so big, it's huge, okay? That's because I don't know exactly how I'm gonna make the lapel, so I'm just making it bigger on purpose. the sleeves. Rather than it being a design for tablecloth, it looks more like it should be the design for wallpaper for a kitchen. Sleeve. I already had the first sleeve cut out because I copied one of the sleeves from a shirt. I'm using it to make another sleeve. They run a little big because it's better to be safe than sorry. Anyway, I've sewed all of the four bodice pieces together to try it on for the first time. The tablecloth has officially become a dress form. I sewed up all of the pieces for the bodice and then this is what I've got. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the lapel for this. So like the other piece of this so that it can be like one color. So it's gonna be this long and there's gonna be like a string right here that you tie. I'm curious to see how it's really gonna look as a dress after it's done because I have this vision in my mind of how the dress is supposed to look, but we'll see how that comes out. I purposely made the lapels big just to make sure I didn't end up cutting them too small. I'm clipping it on to get both pieces sewed together so I can try it on and come back to cut it down to the right size. Okay, so here's how it looks with one side almost done. I still have to put in the collar. First of all, I cut way too much. Look how big this piece is. So big. Unnecessarily big. I cut the belt. So this is going to be sewn like that, pulled out from the inside. <laughs> that looks funny. Something like that. It's actually huge. It's like a bathrobe, but out of tablecloth. The back collar is next. I just need a little piece to connect both lapels together and support them from drooping. I measured the length in between both pieces, but I ended up making the collar a few inches longer anyway because I want to be safe. It's going to be folded in half and sewed inside of the lapels and front bodices. Now all of it needs to be ironed out, but since I forgot to iron out the entire dress, I'm taking advantage of doing it now. I made sure to keep the iron on low so I didn't melt the fabric. I did that once to cheap satin. The iron was on the highest setting and it melted the fabric within a second. I swear the iron's face was printed on it, so yeah, keep that iron low. I have attached the lapels and the back collar. I haven't cut anything and I know that it's just too much fabric because I made the collar like this long and I only needed it to be this long because I wanted to be safe. I made the lapel this big when it needed to be this big. So I have a lot of things to cut. I don't know how good this is going to look simply because it feels like I'm wearing a fruit basket or that I'm the background of a painting from the 15th century. I'm gonna sew both halves of the belt like this 
and then all the way down until I get to here and I'm gonna fold it inside out through this opening right here. So it's all sewn up now. Turn it inside out. I pressed the belts down for a few minutes each so they'd hold their shape. So this was that super long piece that was the belt and I cut it in half for two belts. And I'm attaching the raw edges inside of the bottom of the lapels so they can be sewed together. And that way I can conceal all of the ugly part. I measured from the hem up toward my waistline to make sure each belt would be the exact same height. I definitely don't want one a few inches above the other. This dress is already too weird for that. I think ironing before getting it sewn was the right call because look how neat it looks. Okay, so as you can see, I have attached that. I just need to put the sleeves in and then it'll really be done. I knew I wanted to match the bottom of the dress with the sleeves because it's already hemmed and they both have the exact same design. My hope is it'll look like it was intentional, like the dress's theme is cohesive all throughout the garment. I finished the dress. I finished putting on the sleeves. The sleeves match the hem. You can't see the hem, but I'm gonna wear it out and then you'll be able to see the whole entire dress on me. I still have to put a button like right here inside so that this inside piece doesn't fall down while I'm wearing it and walking in it. Um, so that is the very last thing, well, except for all of the holes that I have to patch up with this extra bit of fabric that I have left, thankfully. I'm gonna cut out these fruits and then patch them onto the parts of the dress that have holes in them from, I don't know how that happened, but it did. I love it. The sleeves are longer than I anticipated, but that's okay because this design right here matches the hem, like the bottom of the dress. I've never made something like this with like a ribbon tie on on the side, but I did it. Okay, so, and I love the lapel. The lapel, however, has um, holes in it right here. There are two holes. Um, I'm going to figure out how to fix that without making it look bad by adding a patch right here, you know? I feel like that could lower the quality of the dress. If adding the patches starts to look tacky, then I'm gonna abandon the idea and I'm actually just going to leave the dress alone and over time see how it frays. And if it starts to look really bad, then I'll, I'm gonna think of something in a way to fix it. I might have to just embroider it. I'll figure it out is what I mean. <laughs> For now, it's basically done. There, I really tried it to avoid all of the holes. So as you can see, these are like very small scuff marks. Like they're barely noticeable. The two biggest holes in this whole entire fabric, I miraculously avoided. So the dress doesn't have those things. I mean, it has other minor issues, but it doesn't have a colossal crater hole in it anywhere. So my mom and sister both liked the dress and my sister thought it was like a bathrobe or that it could have been a bathrobe. So maybe I'll make one of those next time. By the time I got done with making the dress, there was only one hole I had to patch and that's right here is the patch that I made to cover the hole. Since the tablecloth is 100% polyester because I read the tag that was still on it, it's not very breathable and I don't think I'm gonna be wearing it that much this summer. I'll probably wait until fall, Thanksgiving because it's got so many fruits on it. It's a little starchy and not rough, but you can feel those bumps. I think the dress turned out pretty close to what I drew. If you look closely at my sleeve, you can see that there are paint stains. I just couldn't avoid it because I wanted to use this bottom part and there's only so much of that on the tablecloth. To my eyes, they're not that noticeable. I don't think I would have been that eager to turn turn a tablecloth into a dress had it not been this specific kind of tablecloth just because the design is based off of fruits and I thought that was funny. So really the fruits are what inspired me to make this into a dress in the first place. I feel like a walking piece of kitchen history. If somebody asks me, oh, where'd you get that? I have the rights to say this is very, very, very vintage. In terms of how well it'll hold up in the future, I'd say this is already pre-stained for future accidents. It was incredibly fulfilling to create this because I gave it a life outside of the kitchen. It's like a rags to riches story. And would I do this again? 
Of course. This is what I learned from making a dress out of tablecloth. Do make one. But word to the wise, don't make one from used, ruined tablecloth. Don't do it. Use a nice tablecloth. Or don't use tablecloth at all. In fact, just use it to eat off of a table like a normal, sensible person and use real fabric instead. Or you can be like me. 